So first of all, um, what I wanted to do was just hand you over to Jess, um, who is our managing director. Um, I probably should have actually introduced myself. So uh, my name's Laura. Um, I'm the volunteers director with Go Girls. So some of you may have had um, a few emails <laughs> with me back and forth um, while signing up to register. But I'll hand you over to Jess now, who's just going to um, give you a quick introduction on Go Girl. Thanks, Laura, for that. Even though this is probably the second time we've run this, as you can see, we're still working through a bit of that rhythm. So um, if there's anything that's missed, obviously just pop through, pop through a chat message, ask a question, and we'll get to it um, as and when we can. So as Laura mentioned, um, my name's Jess. I'm the um, Go Your Director. And so um, for me, Go Girl is really that first step in the journey where we've got primary school girls and high school girls in Victoria that we want to open them up to consider opportunities in STEM or STEAM, i.e. Um, science, tech, engineering, arts and maths. Um, and this year we are super excited to come back and do this physically in person. So all those pictures that you'll see that's on this side at the moment is actually pictures from our 2018 event. So it's actually been four years since we've done this in person. Um, then again, I realize COVID's probably taken out three of them, so that probably explains a lot. Um, but at the same, by the same token, um, knowing obviously that there's some back and forth and um, some COVID recommendations still coming to light, which um, if, anyone, if anyone's got a question on that, we can definitely elaborate on that later. We actually have um, about 1,700 girls coming from 70 schools to Deakin University on the 18th of August. So it's an amazing opportunity for yourself to be involved, volunteer for the day and actually be able to help us inspire, excite and help them become the next female STEAM professionals of the future. Cause I think we all agree there's too many jobs for us to fill right now and there's probably way too many jobs for us in the future. So anything we can do to help them enter our industry and be excited by what we do, I think is always a step in the right direction. So um, I might get you to switch to the next slide, Laura. If we look um, at how um, previous events that we've done, we've actually noticed that there's been about a 25% uptake in interest. Um, so it's really been amazing to see what one event for one year does um, and this was actually just from our virtual event. So I'm super excited to see what we can do physically. 1,700 girls one day, we're gonna, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be a lot of noise. It's gonna be a lot of excited school girls. Um, and we'd love for you to be part of um, on the day with us and um, sharing your love for STEAM with the girls as much as any of us um, on, the, on the volunteering site also. Um, have, have an appreciation for what we're doing in this space. So it is so exciting to have you here tonight. Um, and while I am going to have to get back to the car, cause I'm actually still in the car trying to get home. Um, I did want to jump in and make sure that you all heard from me cause it's such a, it's so important to my heart. And I really um, am thankful for everyone's right. involvement here tonight. You're up to um, lovey. Here we go. I'm not sure who's that, maybe still with their um, microphone on, but um, I'm, we'll hand you back to Laura for the rest of the presentation. Uh, no, not a problem at all. Um, and as I've said, we'd, we're absolutely loving everyone's volunteering involvement on the day. Um, and we're looking forward to actually seeing everyone in person, outside of screens and actually see, um, see the girls and hear the girls in person. It's gonna be an amazing event. Um, and I'm sure that we're going to come out super enthused and excited as well. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much, Jess. Um, so what we'll do, first of all, is just kind of go through how um, 
the day will run next Thursday. As Jess mentioned, we've got approximately 1,700 girls all coming to um, Deakin University Burwood campus. So um, I don't know if you've ever seen 1,700 girls. Um, it is a large group. So there has been quite a lot of planning that has gone into this to make it a smooth day for them. Um, so I'll just give you a bit of an idea of how that will run. So. On the day, we do, um, we have a number of, um, it is 100% volunteer run. Um, so we do have various volunteer roles on the day. So we have uh, bus liaison roles, which is getting the girls essentially from the, um, from their coach that drops them off or their minibus and actually getting them to the venue. Um, Deakin University is quite a large campus for those that haven't uh, been there before. Um, we also have our hub roles, which are more around kind of actually being on campus and helping any girls that are lost um, and getting girls into the right, make sure, making sure that they're in the right area. Um, we also have our girls registration desk. Um, so that's something that when they are coming through in the morning, they are um, getting registered. So we know, you know who's attended and getting making sure that they all have lanyards on so they're easily identifiable. Um, and we have our girl guides as well. So um, our girl guides is one that we are um, training at the moment in person. So if you had a preference for a girl guide role, then um, I would suggest coming this Saturday in person because that is one that we do really need to train in person as it is the one that's pretty much guiding the girls throughout the whole day um, in, in between all their different areas and, and sessions. And then we also have our speaker buddies. So speaker buddies are um, those volunteers that are actually getting our speakers um, to the different um, workshops and sessions and making sure that they're keeping them on time as well. Um, but we'll go through that one in a bit later. And then there'll be supervisors. So um, there will be people for you to report into. So if there is any issues on the day, you will have all that information about who your supervisor will be. So you can escalate anything to them. Some important information for the day. Um, so um, our volunteer registration desk opens at 7.30 a.m. at Deakin University. Um, so what we ask for you to do is when you do arrive on campus, and um, we will obviously provide you with a map beforehand on how to get there, um, you do need to go straight to that to a volunteer control room. That room is yours um, where everyone will be able to um, take time out, have lunch, and um, I'll show you that later on in the slides. Um, but we do ask you to go straight there so we can get you registered in. We know that you're on site and we can also get the information to you um, in regards to um, your role for the day. I would ask that if you are running late to let us know um, and ideally if you can try, we say 7.30 because really we want to get you um, registered in before 8 o'clock. Um, as you can imagine, um, this year in being in person, it's probably a little bit different to previous years because we are battling with, you know, we are still battling with COVID and flu. Um, so therefore we do need um, a cutoff period where we need to actually put in place our plan Bs uh, <laughs> with regards to if people are unwell on the day. So that's why we ask you to get there a little bit earlier so that we can um, assess who's there on the day and move uh, potentially move people around if needed um, to the more critical roles. Um, by the way, if I talk too fast, I know I, sometimes I can talk fast, just just shout out, out at me and say, can you repeat that? Um, I'll try my best. <laughs> um, in terms of volunteers, um, we do ask if you could all wear black um, or as close to black on the day. What that does mean is that we can um, we can identify you easily as a volunteer. Um, so yeah, if you could all please wear black or again, as close to black as possible, that would be awesome. Um, lunch and teas and coffees, everything's gonna be provided to you. So you don't need to worry about that. The only thing I would say, and some communication will come out on email to you is if, for example, you wanted to bring your own snacks, um, we are going to provide snacks. But if you can refrain from bringing nuts um, on site, just because um, there is school requirements and school rules that we do have. So we'll communicate that information to you on the email as well, just in terms of what we would like you not to bring if you was planning on bringing any snacks with you. Cool. 
The way that we identify uh, volunteers, so um, all the different roles um, have a way that we can identify, as, as I mentioned, everyone who's a volunteer will be wearing all black. Um, you'll also all have a lanyard as well, which will have emergency con uh, like the role that you've got, and it will also have a map on the back as well. Um, for the bus liaison role, and I don't know if you can see me in the screen, you will get a flag that looks like this. Um, if everyone can see that, um, this will just, um, the flag will look like this, and this will be what you'll have on the day, and it's kind of like hold it up high and escort the girls from the, uh, the coach drop-off point. So you'll pick that up in the morning. Um, those in the hub, everyone will have um, Ask Me stickers. So if you see an Ask Me sticker, it's just a sign for the girls to be able to, if they are lost or they don't know where they are or don't know where they're going, they can ask those people um, with those stickers. And then the girl guides will be identified by a flag um, and their flags are going to look like this. They're a little bit bigger. Um, so they have will be colour coded and will also have a squad number. We're still confirming on the supervisors, but it's likely probably going to be a cap. So supervisors will have a coloured cap so you can easily identify them. Um, in terms of the actual girls themselves, um, so the day um, the girls are split up into four streams and that's how they're going to run through the day for their programme. Each stream is identified by the colour lanyard that they're wearing. Um, I'll go through that in a sec, but the colours are black, white, pink and yellow. So whatever colour they're wearing will identify where they should be on the day. Each stream is then split up into squads. So each squad is identified by the number on their lanyard and the, the people in the girl guide roles will have those girls in their squad. There's probably about 20 to 30 girls per squad. Um, so you can imagine there's quite a lot of squads uh, happening on the day within those four streams. The information we're going to provide you with, um, so you're probably wondering, OK, this is already starting to sound like a bit of information. Um, we'll make sure that we, you are prepared as possible. So th this will come out on an email to you and the days leading up to the event. But when you arrive, you will get a role description. So that will confirm. So we'll confirm in advance um, which role you'll be. Um, but you'll have that role description on the day. You'll also get an agenda for the day. You'll get a big map um, as well. So you can um, navigate um, Deakin University. Emergency contact details. So those are for the supervisors and other areas and your identifier. What I would say is if you are going to be in a bus liaison role, um, the role is outdoors because um, you're moving them from the coach point to the actual venue. I would recommend comfortable shoes and a warm coat on the day. We're in Melbourne. The weather's unpredictable. <laughs> so I would say dress warm um, is probably the, uh, the best way to describe that. So this gives you a bit of an idea of what the program looks for looks like on the day. As I mentioned, we have four streams. Um, because there's such a large number of girls, we have staggered when those girls are arriving, just um, so we can move the traffic of girls around the venue. So for example, um, in the black stream, um, there that is for years five and six. The white stream is years five and six. The pink stream is years seven and eight, and the yellow stream is years nine and 12. So if, for example, um, you've got a girl who's in, see a girl who's in the black stream, you can, ident you'll have this agenda that can identify that if it's between this time, they should be in the keynote. So it follows a program um, with lunch break. So it does, um, there will be different things happening at each time. But you'll, we'll get you all that information as well. So I'm just going to do a bit of a virtual tour of Deakin University, um, just so you can see the campus um, before we kind of go into the roles in a little bit more detail. Um, 
So what I'll do is there will be a few pictures that I'll be able to show you. We have got a video, so you'll just have to bear with us on the video. We took this on Sunday, so I will try not talk fast um, and I'll pause in between each area. But if there is anything that you miss, um, obviously this, rec this is recorded, so this can be sent out to everyone who's attended today as well to review if you need it. Cool, so I'll just show you, play the video. So first of all, as mentioned, um, this is the main hub here that you see here. Um, when you arrive on the day, when you come through into the main entrance, you'll go up the stairs and you'll go um, turn left and go down the corridor. And this is where you'll be going into the volunteers hub, uh, the volunteers control room, sorry, uh, which is on level three. Um, so there will be a registration desk here, which is where you'll find everything. And then it's quite a large room. There'll be tables. As I mentioned, there will be, um, as I mentioned, there'll be in that room, you'll have lunch provided to you. There'll also be coffee, tea, I think chai latte, I think I got told. Um, so you'll be well looked after. There'll be some fruit, you know, snacks. So yeah, and that's also an area as well that, in between sessions, if, for example, um, your role means that you've got a break, um, it does mean that you can go into that room and just take five as well. And it's an area where you can kind of leave all your items if you've brought bags with you and stuff like that as well. So that's your room. So next we'll go on to um, where the speaker and sponsor hub. So those particularly that will be in the speaker um, uh, buddy roles. And um, this is where you'll probably need to know where this room is. So when you come out of the volunteer room, you'll walk basically on the same floor, walk across the lounge and it will be on the other side. And that's where oh, I go back to that. So this is where all the speakers um, will be located. Anyone from the trade show will be going in there as well. So that's where all our sponsors and speakers are going to have as their room for the day. So um, when we go through later the, the role for the speaker buddy, um, that's where you'll collect the speaker from and take them back to. So they'll be checked in and out of there. So next we'll go on to workshops. So the workshops, if you go down the stairs, and um, these will be dotted over the campus, but going outside of entrance two, and um, there's long rows here where you'll find um, lots of lots of different rooms um, that will have the workshops in. They're all labeled with the room number, and obviously you'll get given all that information on the day. So yeah, you will have all those rooms in there and they'll go through into there. So the rooms kind of look like this. And that's a workshop room. So in next one will be the keynote room. So in the keynote, um, there will be all the squads within one stream will all be in that keynote all at the same time. So nice and easy to remember. I think from memory, the um, capacity is about 650 in the keynote. So if you was coming out of the workshop, for example, and navigating that way, and um, this is in building HF, by the way, I think I saw someone pop up with a question on that. So this is HF on the Deacon map um, in Central Precinct. This is entrance two that you've just seen there. You'll come through here across the Central Precinct and hub and into the lecture theatre here, the Ruston Lecture Theatre, which is where the keynote will be held. And as you'll see when we go through the door, it is quite a large um, lecture theatre. So next we'll go into the super workshops. So super workshops, um, I think going back to the programme, um, keynote one stream will all be in the keynote at any one time. Super workshops, there will be potentially three happening concurrently at any one time. So they are a bit larger. The other workshops will be individual workshops. So there'll be about 25 workshops happening at any one time. So the super, the super workshops are held in one of the other lecture theatres, which is outside of the HF building. 
So when you leave the main entrance, which um, we've just come out of here, there is a bridge um, that we cross and the building, um, we'll keep walking towards it, um, is towards where the bus um, drop off point is. Um, but again, you'll get on map <laughs> out on where all these locations are um, and have these available on the day. And this is why it's probably quite good to um, arrive a little bit earlier as well, because obviously training you virtually, you wouldn't have seen this in person, this venue. So when, as you come out off that bridge, it's uh, one of the super workshop rooms is here on the right hand side. And that's in building X, one of the workshop rooms. And as you can see, it's a bit bigger. So what I'll do now is to show you where the bus pick up and drop off point is for the girls. Um, so they will come down this long. So they all come get dropped off um, down um, at the bottom of this walkway here. And, and we'll walk. this is where they'll be walked through to that venue, the main venue that we showed you at the beginning of the video. This area here on the right hand side, that's actually where the girls registration desk will be. So that it is a bit of a walk, uh, which is why I say wear a coat and some comfortable shoes. So not too much of a walk, but it is about a five minute walk. So they'll come from the bottom of there. Thank you for that. And then we'll just um, finish up. Can everyone hear that by the way? No, cool. All right, let me just mm -hmm. um, stop sharing one sec. I knew that might happen um, and just share with sound because there is one thing I do want to show you, which I think is always very good to hear from Chris, who's our chairman. About this event is that it, it's important and the importance is about what we're doing to inspire the girls and and see more women into into the workforce and and following their dream and it's opening their eyes for their dream and while today may seem a little daunting because ct has done this for a long for many many years i think 2006 was our first one and um so we've never had COVID before um and we've never had uh, and we've got the flu as well but what i would say to you is but just remember that today, while it might be, you might be thinking of all the things, you are the inspiration. So those girls are really inspired by what you're doing. And um, the inspiration is around that our youth, as, as role models, they need role models. And the GoGirl team are a role model, but don't forget the importance you've got because you're actually making a connection that those girls will never, ever forget. So that's our tour of Deakin. Um, it's always great to hear from Chris um, as well, who's super inspirational. Um, so um, what I'll do now is um, just show you what we've just seen, because <laughs> you're probably thinking that was a lot of information um, around the, the campus. As I mentioned, it is a pretty big campus. So what you saw here um, is this is where the girls will be dropped off. That was the walkway that you saw here. So I'll just my pen because I'm not sure if you can see. So this is the first um, area where they get dropped off and that walkway was that area that you saw at the end there. And then this is where that, that building was on the outside with the registration desk. As we came up here, this was that super workshop area that we saw in building X. And then we walked across the bridge here, which took us into HF. So this is the main area that you'll be for the majority of the day. When you come into this area, that's when you would walk up on the stairs on the right hand side, um, and that will then take you on to level three, which if you go left, you'll end up in the volunteers control room. And on this side here is where the um, speaker body lounge is. This was the keynote hall that you saw. So it's part of, all, this is all part of one building. And that's that big corridor of all those workshops that we saw as well. Um, we also um, didn't have that on the video, but as you when you come through the um, main entrance on the right hand side, there's a massive sports hall, which is this building here, HB. That is where our trade show is going to be on the day. Um, you can't miss it. It's 
pretty big. It's going to be, I'd imagine there'll be some noise coming from there. It's going to be one of the um, a really fun area for the girls. And that's where we've got our sponsors and their, 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 their booths there. I believe I've been told there's a virtual dinosaur as well in there. So, and um, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and this is going to be the type of map that you'll receive um, for on the day. So as you will see, you'll get the full map and it will be have the rooms listed that will be in use on the day and where those rooms are located. And just to give you some more visualization, um, this is the coach pickup point. So um, anyone in the bus liaison role in the arrival role one will all start here in this area here. We have got traffic management. So the one thing that volunteers can't do is cross this road here. So that is our limit, is this uh, line here and this pavement. So everything from here onwards is us. Everything here where the girls get dropped off on the coach is with the traffic management. And this is the girls registration desk that we saw as well. Um, again, this was the central precinct or the hub as I call it. Um, this is going to be probably one of the main areas that will be quite um, a lot of movement happening throughout the day. And again, this is the volunteer control room. And um, this is about half of it. It was sectioned off when I took the picture. Um, but it just gives you a bit of an idea that, um, yeah, there'll be plenty of room for everyone. And again, the speaker lounge that we saw and the keynote speaker room that we saw. Cool. I know there's probably still lots of questions, and um, so we'll go through those at the end as well. So I'll get the chat up as well. So I'll keep going because um, we're doing good for time and then we'll open it up because I'm sure there'll be some questions. So roles on the day. So um, one of the roles that um, we do have on the day is the bus liaison role. So the bus liaison role is um, really that first touch point with the girls. As you can imagine, some of these girls might have been traveling from uh, Ballarat locally. They're going to get off this coach. They're going to be super pumped and excited. So um, this is you are anyone in this in the first arrival role will be that first touch point to those girls and getting them to the venue. And um, so the purpose really is to make sure that they arrive and they get there safely and to make sure that we keep the flow of traffic um, of the girls as well. So we really don't want big, large groups of uh, schools that have just got off a coach standing around and then that starts to build up because that's not going to be very COVID safe either. So what will happen is once you've registered in the desk, if um, at the control room, once you've um, done that, um, what we would ask is that anyone in a bus liaison role will head to their first post at 8.15. Um, the girls will arrive around 8.45, but knowing traffic, coaches, they could arrive early. So we like you to get there a bit earlier if possible, just in case there is any early arrivals. There is three roles um, that will play a part in getting the girls to the venue. One of those roles is um, getting the girls from the coach drop off point, which is that zebra crossing um, that I showed you earlier and taking them to that registration desk. So that will be a bit of a back and forth and um, getting the girls back into that registration desk. Again, we're doing it that we're splitting it into two um, to be able to keep the flow of traffic going. And then the arrival role too will be getting the girls from the registration desk. So if you're in that role, your first location point when you leave the control room will be at the girls registration desk waiting for girls who have been registered in. So you'll be picking up any girls that are wearing a lanyard and then taking them to that main hub, which is the main entrance of building HF, which which we saw earlier. And then you'll hand those off then to the volunteers in the, the room and then head back to the registration desk to get the next group of girls. Because I think um, the 70 schools coming 1700 girls they're going to there's going to be a continuous arrival um of those girls and then we have arrival role three so not all of the schools are arriving by coach some are arriving by minibus if they're in smaller numbers so there is another um area which is for the minibus drop-off point 
and they will be taking uh, the girls to the second registration desk, which is uh, um, just outside of the hub. I've put inside there, but it will be just outside, but it will be undercover. Um, because obviously with the, the girls arriving in the morning, that role essentially finishes at a certain point around that kind of 11 o'clock mark because there may be some late arrivals. So what we would say is anyone in that role in the morning will then move into more, uh, join the what I call the hub team, which will be joining that after that to help with uh, lost girls, navigating girls to rooms, um, which we'll go through next. And just to refresh on that map where those areas were. So coach drop off point is here. Registration desk here, so the starting point of, of, of uh, roll two. And then this area here just outside the main building is where that minibus drop off point is. So coaches are going to be coming this way round. Um, sorry. Uh, coaches will be coming in from here. coming in from here and they'll be going here, dropping them off and that's where that zebra crossing is. So um, we need all volunteers to stay on this area only. Um, and then this is where that minibus drop off point is. And again, just to recap on the images of what they look like, um, this is what that coach drop off point looks like and that girl's registration desk. So moving on to the hub role, um, so there's a few different roles that are happening under this area. So this is quite an important role where it's really keeping the girls moving in the direction they need to be moving in. Um, so not congregating around, being on health, hand to help anyone who is lost and guiding them. Again, large number of girls, there will be lost girls. <laughs> so it's getting them to the different areas and where they need to be. You'll all be provided with a program agenda of the squad that they're uh, all the squad numbers and what room they should be in so that if there is a lost girl you can quickly identify from the lanyard they're wearing that will have their squad number on where they need to be and where that correlates to the room that they should be in so the hub main entrance and entrance to, to so if you're on um if you're posted on those two areas so at those two entrance points it's making sure that anyone coming into that um, central precinct hub area is all wearing a lanyard so they should be registered at that point if there is anybody coming into the building that isn't wearing a lanyard um, of, of the girls then it's really directing them to the location that they need to be in um, depending on sorry if they have a lanyard um, it's directing them to the location they need to be in depending on their stream so for example if I'm a girl and I walk into the main entrance and it's the beginning of the day and I'm wearing a black lanyard my first role uh, my first session is the keynote so all you have to do is point them and say you're that way to the keynote hall if for example their first session is meant to be a workshop. There'll be lots of girl guides in the area with their flags held high with that squad number. So this flag um, will all be shown in the area. So it's just pointing the girls and say, go find your squad number and that girl. If it's the trade show, then the trade show is on the right hand side. So it's saying, I can see that you're yellow. You should be in trade show. You need to go to the trade show room and point them in that direction. And, and with the super workshops, the assembly area for super workshops is up, up those stairs in between the volunteer control room and the speaker lounge. So it's sending them up the stairs where there'll be somebody on hand to guide them there. If somebody, if a girl comes into the entrance and they don't have a lanyard on, then it's directing them to the registration desk um, because they obviously haven't registered yet. And there will be people there on hand to find out what, what squad they should be in, what stream they should be in, and they'll make sure that they get the lanyard. So it's just making sure that they get to that area. If you're posted on a keynote entrance, um, then it will be checking that any girls entering into the keynote hall have the relevant coloured lanyard that should be in that session at the time. So again, if it's first thing in the morning, the first session of the day, anyone coming into that area should be wearing a black lanyard on there over themselves. If they've got pink, they're in the they've gone to the wrong space. 
at the end of the session, um, when the girls leave, there will be somebody in the keynote that will be calling the girls out in squad order. Now, trying to get them to leave in an orderly fashion might be <laughs> a little bit more difficult than we say. So um, generally they'll be coming out, but it's just directing because what will happen is again, the in that main area outside the keynote, all the girl guides um, who are picking up their girls will be there ready and waiting with a flag. So it's literally just saying, make sure you go find your squad um, and pointing them in that direction. With the trade show entrance, it's again, similar to the keynote, just checking that everybody going into that trade show has the relevant color lanyard that should be in the in going in at that time. Um, ask me, so this is probably one of the ones that um, is more likely that um, will be a role assigned to you potentially on the day. Um, this is a roaming role and um, it will be checking certain things because um, it will be checking to make sure hey, have I just walked past a girl that isn't wearing a lanyard? So making sure all girls have lanyards on, They're helping any girls that are lost and assisting girl um, with a score in the girls back to their session. So if they are lost or, for example, they've taken a break to go to the bathroom, um, then it's making sure that you help them to get back to where they need to be because the girl guides will be continually moving to the session and they may come and grab somebody from the ask me um, area to say, hey, can you, these, these girls need to go to the bathroom. Can you make sure they come back to the, come and meet us back at the room that we need to go to. So everything's identifiable by the lanyard that they're wearing. And again, you'll have that information of all the different squads and streams and where they should be at any one time. Um, and it's just being on standby really to assist with tasks um, if needed. So for example, if um, when the girls are at the coach, um, arrive at the coach point and there isn't the right amount of lanyards for the amount of girls that are there, um, it might be that someone's called to go grab lanyards because they're at the second registration desk and get them down to the, the first registration desk so they're there. So there's all these different things that could happen on the day. And one of the points that I haven't added on there as well is this year um, with um, the um, obviously the knowing that there's still COVID out there, that we will be um, having some COVID marshals on site as well. So that might be just making sure that there isn't large groups um, congregating together, making sure that people are continually moving to where they need to be um, just to make sure that it doesn't start to build, because if it starts building, then that can um mean that there's a lot of people together in one one area. And then um, the last one I wanted to talk to you about was the speaker buddy role. Um, so speaker buddies are responsible for a score in the speakers and or sponsors to their sessions and workshops throughout the day on the Deakin campus and introducing them to the audience. So um, if you have when you registered noted down that you aren't comfortable um speaking to a large audience then we will take make we will we'll take that into consideration that we will try not assign you into a speaker buddy role um just just in case but if that's something that you didn't note down at the time and is something that you don't feel comfortable with just drop the volunteers email um a message and we can um we can try and see what we can do we can't always guarantee um because we are dealing with approximately nearly 200 volunteers um so as you can imagine it's a little bit of a logistical one to um, to move people around um but for the speaker buddy um so what will be required of this role is when you're in the uh, volunteer control room which is again your room it will be pick, uh, going across to the speaker lounge um 30 minutes before the session their session is due to start escorting them to the location um, so whether that's the um, one of the workshop rooms which you will be given in advance of what room they need to be uh, taken to whether that's a super workshop um, what we are asking again these are a few things that we've added because of um, keeping it a COVID safe event and um, when you arrive we are just asking if the volunteers assisting the speakers can just do a quick wipe down we'll give you um, um sanitized uh wipes but just do a quick wipe down of the the tables just from the previous session um because obviously you'll be there a bit earlier just while the speaker's testing their av making sure everything's working 
Um, what I would say as well is if, for example, the speaker is having issues with their technology, like they can't get the presentation up, they can't get any sound out, um, these things are all, all going to be checked in advance. But on the off chance there is an issue, um, then there will be um, roaming um, help from Deakin University on the day. That will be in the vicinity. Um, that will be out. Um, so you just might need to just pop out the room and locate them and, and come and get them to help. But that should that shouldn't be an issue, but if it is, um, there will be people on hand. That's not something that you need to do on the day. Um, so when the girls are, the girls will then arrive into the room. Um, and if, um, for example, that speaker, some speakers will be introducing themselves. Um, but if that speaker isn't introducing themselves, then it would we will provide you with a speaker bio beforehand. So it'll just give you a small description around that speaker and what their session is, um, and it'll just be introducing that speaker. And then the last thing is, is just keeping an eye on the time because you'll stay in the room with the speaker and five minutes before the end of the session, the session's due to end, it's just giving the speaker a five minute warning just so they know that um, there's five minutes left of the session. And then when it finishes, guiding them back to that speaker lounge. And to give you an example of what those speaker bios look like and the type of information that you'll receive. So you will get pretty much um, a little bit of a background about them, what their topic is going to be on and what you need to kind of read out. Um, so we'll provide that information to you. So you'll get it like this with the room that you need to be in as well. And who this, and the names of the speakers. So you'll probably want to uh, go and introduce yourself to those speakers ahead of time. Um, uh, but we'll try where we can keep you with the same speakers throughout the day. Um, but again, things uh, depending. Some speakers are coming in for certain sessions and won't be there in the afternoon, for example. So you may move to a different speaker in the afternoon. Cool. I know there's going to be a lot of questions because that was a lot of um, of me talking um, and a lot of information. Um, so what I might do first of all is just go through some of the questions on the chat and then if you do have questions, um, please if you could raise your hand just so it saves everybody jumping in all at the same time with questions. Um, so I'll just run through some of these um, that I can see here and we'll try and get through as many as we can in the next um, because I know that we've got about 10 minutes left of the session. Um, so. Perfect. So in terms of um, one of the questions was, um, is there parking facilities for the volunteers? Um, could you please point it in the map? So if I. will go backwards. So there is um, parking in here as at the, um, in this area here. Uh, sorry, no, this one here. I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, oh, trying to get the pen. There is parking here. So there's parking here, which is available. Um, I believe if you, uh, we will send you information about parking in advance. So that will all information will be all sent to you. Um, I think some of the information was on some of the placeholders for the weekend. Um, I believe that from what the information I saw is that there is a couple of areas that you can park on the map. So there's anywhere you see a P is a parking area, but I'd probably say this one's quite a good one, the multi-level parking um, that will be available on the day. Um, you would need to download the Cello Park app, but again, we'll provide you with all that information in advance. If, if you are catching public transport, then the tram stop is literally right outside this area here, so it's right here. And then you just walk straight up. But we'll get all that information to you, so don't worry, you'll have all that. Um, will there be lockers or a place to keep her belongings? Great question. Um, we haven't got lockers um, organised for the day. Um, so that is, that is a good question. I definitely will raise that if there is concerns about leaving personal belongings um, on the day. So I will raise that question. But at this stage, at the moment, there won't be lockers. So I would say you can keep any kind of personal belongings with you if you want to. Um, I mean, everybody, the only people that are going to be allowed and going into that room is everybody 
here. Um, so I would hope that everyone's good people. Um, so um, that should be, it shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, if you, there is concerns around you bringing personal belongings and leaving them in the room, please just reach out to the volunteers um, email um, and we can try and chat to you offline about that. Um, disabled students, um, it is likely that we will have um, some students on the day. Um, I'm not sure on the, if we've got that confirmed just yet, but we are still currently speaking to all the schools at the moment. So 100% if that is something that's going to affect your role uh, where you need to do something different, um, we will make you aware of that. And mask mandate. Great question. Um, at the moment, we are following Victorian government guidelines, which is um, if you want to wear a mask on the day, then please wear a mask. Uh, we will have plenty of masks in that volunteer control room available if you do want to. But if you don't feel comfortable wearing a mask and you don't want to wear a mask, then that is OK for you to make that decision. That decision is yours to make. Um, so that is the current guidelines at the moment. What I would say is that it is likely that the girls will be wearing masks because they um, a lot of the schools are mandating that. So. Um, it, yeah, at this stage, unless something changes in the next week, um, our instruction is that that is up to you. Um, but we will have masks on hand should you um, turn up and realise you forgot your mask and you want a mask. Um, cool. How do I know which role I have been assigned to? So. Um, you will get information um, in the next um, few, I suppose, early next week with regards to um, the role that has been assigned. Um, you'll also get that information in the morning. Um, what I'd probably say is there will be teachers on site as well. So all the girls are coming with teachers. So um, and I would probably say that we've with Vic ICT and GoGo, we've been doing this event for a very long time. So if there is any concerns about the role that you're doing, there is lots and lots of eyes um, on this event. There's a lot more people around that know what's happening than you probably know. We've got a lot of people behind the scenes that have been working um, since I think February this year to put this event on. So um, there will be people on hand to help um, should you um, not feel comfortable or not be sure on the day as well. And if there is any questions, always um, feel free to, to email us if there is any concerns. Um, and we will try and get that information to you as soon as possible. Um, it will be likely probably one of those roles, the hub, one of those hub roles, speaker buddy or the bus liaison. As I mentioned, if you did have a preference to be a girls guide, so guiding the girls on the day, um, that, then I would recommend coming to the in-person training session on Saturday. How do you spell the parking app? Um, we'll get that onto an Ebo. It's Cello, C-E-L-L-O um, is my, uh, yeah, ah, someone's put it on there. Perfect. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> um, perfect. Um, I'm supposed to be doing a girl guide role and you mentioned that girl guides need to append in person. Unfortunately, I can't attend one, so could I ask for another role? Um, and if you want to drop me a message on email, I'll chat to you about that offline um, if that's OK. Um, cool. Is there any questions? And we've got a lot of people on this call, so I'm going to try and see if I can see any hands up. But yeah, is there any other questions that anybody has? Um, Again, I know it's a lot of information that we've just kind of given you. Um, it is always hard to do these sessions virtually, but we wanted to offer it virtually because we do understand that, you know, this is your time and um, you are all, um, you know, put your hand up to volunteer next week. But we wanted to try and give you as much information as possible so you're not just turning up on the day and then trying to work out what you're doing. <laughs> so um, that's why we run these sessions. Any questions? Any questions? Cool. Well, I'll take silence as everybody's super keen, knows what they're doing. <laughs> so um, if there is questions that come up, um, um, 
um, in between now and that information coming or when the information comes to you um, early next week, just let me know. Um, I did just see one a question come through. So can a volunteer bring a kid age 14 with them? Unfortunately, at the moment, um, that you wouldn't be able to bring um, others with you if they're not registered, just because we are have got a, a system in place where we need to um, track everyone. Obviously, what I'd probably say to everybody on this call, if you haven't already applied for your working with children's check or got your working with children's check, send us um, any numbers back. Please, can you do that as soon as possible? It is quite important because any volunteer who turns up on the day and hasn't applied for the working with children's check Unfortunately, we do need to turn you away. It is a recommend. It is a requirement um, for us that everybody on site on that day has a working with children's check. Now, um, I understand that the event is next week. If you haven't applied at the moment yet, and um, and I know that you're probably thinking that's quite short notice to get it back in time. As long as you have applied for the working with children's check, that that is fine. For, uh, that is something that we can work with. Um, yeah, so we all we need back is either your working with children's check application number or your working um, working with children's check number. We're in the background. So if you send us the application number, but completely forget to send us the number when it's approved, don't worry. We're in the background constantly checking application numbers to see who, if someone's been approved and get an update in those details are in. So um, I don't stress. Um, if, if you haven't done that, um, as long as we've got that application number, that's what we need. Thank you so much for taking an hour out of your evening um, to join this call. Again, if there's any concerns, let me know. Um, it's going to be a really great day. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun. And yeah, um, if we can even just get a small number of girls to think about um, future careers in STEM and STEAM. Um, I think we have all done our part um, for the future. So thank you again um, for joining this call. If there is any other questions, please email the volunteers at gogirlgoforit.com. Um, and we will try and get back to your questions as quickly as possible. We have had quite a lot coming through to us so we're trying to work through um, those as well so if there is any questions just let me know but you will have we will try and make sure that you are fully prepared for on the day with all the information that you have cool have a great evening thank you very much and see you all next thursday thank you thank you